is up, App Nation. It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com. And welcome to the fam, Fridays with App Masters. And look, I'm always excited for every episode, but I'm especially excited for this one because I've been a big fan of all their monetization, their extreme growth. And I'm a little jealous that our guest decided to do a different podcast first. But heck, she's here today. Her name is Yeva. She is the product manager at Headway. And if you're not familiar with Headway, where have you been? Headway is a global ed tech plat- star- startup with Ukrainian roots that develops products for learning and self-growth based self-growth based on bite-sized content. You know, super simple. You can consume it in a couple of minutes. Their flagship product, Headway, which I have analyze on a previous video is the most downloaded book summary app in the world. And in 2023, Headway made the list of the top 50 startups in Europe with the highest potential to become a unicorn. All right. All that said, let's get into the content and let's bring in Yeva. Yeva, welcome Hi, to the show. <laughs> Hi, now, thanks. When we, when we promoted the show, it was we had 18 million downloads, but 20 over 27 million downloads. Wow, congratulations. How does it feel to be able to say that? It feels amazing. And it feels amazing <laughs> to, you know, renew this number of millions each month, even each week. It changes. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't ready for this. Uh, such a big change when I rechecked it. Yeah. Nice. So it's Congratulations. Great. I want to say hi to a few people. Nurex, Nor, how's it going, man? Always happy to see you. And then, oh, this is Nero Skills. Oh, what's up, Mary? She changed the icon. And then, hi, fam. We got Urban from Numella app. We've got Luis. Hola, Luis. Cypher. Mohammed's here. Good to see you again live on Instagram. PJ. I always see him. We're working together. We got a LinkedIn. Rudy, all right, I just want to say hi. Calvin, Portugal, you know, to Poland. Rudy's hi. in Poland. We got Ireland, Adrian, <laughs> just caught on the other podcast, and then Mark, Oakland, but UK as well. All right, Yeva, let's start it off because, you know, I broke down the video where I was really highlighting the headway flow. Talk to me about your monetization strategy. Like, I'll just start off with that and I'll get into some of the more pointed questions. Okay, okay, let's start with that. At first, I wanted to say hi to each person in our audience as well. Okay, headway is monetization. I would say that monetization has always been one of our priorities for every stage of product development, both for early stage and for the later stage. Um, Of course, as with uh, yeah, those are our paywalls. Yeah, thank you, the, Steve. I'll just have the flow. <laughs> I have the entire flow. I'm a big fan. I was like, look, I love this. So, it's as you're amazing. talking, I'll just show. Oh. <laughs> okay, so the onboarding and the paywalls and the monetization models have always been a part of our focus and something that we've always focused on mostly, especially when we just launched. So we even had this rule when we launched that we should always have at least one test active on our paywall at every time. So that was something that was kind of like a rule of thumb for us that helped us optimize our monetization model, I would say, really well over the years. And how do you balance between, you know, when I... I look, I'm a fan, right? Like, so I always say, look, look at headway. They do discounting right on first open. You have the normal paywall that I have during the onboarding where most people are going to buy. If they say no, you hit view other plans. You see this. Talk to me about this. Like I see like different annual plans too. And this, this could be old. Okay. So maybe this is like an Mm -hmm. old test, but When I hear from other people about discounting, they go, well, it's going to impact my LTV. It's going to impact, it's going to, you know, they have all these, like, I don't want to do excuses for not doing it. What do you have to say to those people who are kind of like, I don't want to do that, Eva? I'd like to say you're wrong. (laughs) Well, of course, I won't be so harsh. Of course, it depends, as in every situation in the world, you should always test something. But in our experience, discounting works all the time. The thing is, you have to be smart about it, of course. You shouldn't just give 
your product at the lowest price possible and that's all. You should try to understand at which moments and at which prices the users are ready to buy and are not ready to buy. So discounting flow is something that we've worked on as well. Something that I would like to, to highlight is that we have multiple discounts. So, you know, you have this main discount on your main paywall, the full price and the seasonal discount. And it is something that works right from the beginning. Then when you close the paywall, we can show a special offer for 50% off. And then maybe the next day when you come back and you try to read the summary, we show another offer of 70% off. So mm -hmm. we always have this multiple um, discounting logic flows, which uh, we constantly test and they work really well when there is this step-by-step -step discounting. Yeah, I love this one. This is the one I highlighted too, like in our my APS presentation. I was like, I love this. Look at this. It's down funnel. Most of the content is locked, which I love too, right? Like you got to force. You built a great product. You believe in the product. You you say, look, if you believe in us, for us to grow and continue to produce this great content, we're going to have to monetize. And so you to unlock this rest, I get the normal paywall. I can view other plans. And then if I hit X out of here, you give me a 70% offer. I just, I love mm -hmm. just this routine this it's like you know you see in every e-commerce platform eva but unfortunately on the upside you know people are kind of shy to do stuff like this yeah yeah i agree and you know what i really agree with what you said about uh, having to monetize i think that um, i see this mistake quite often with especially early stage apps and startups they delay starting work on monetization to like the moment when they are really sure that the product uh, fits the users, that it solves their problem. And I would yeah. say that it is a mistake because you know you will need to find the right monetization model at some point, and the sooner the better. Yeah. And there may be a situation when you know you find you create a perfect product and the users use it, but they won't be ready to pay for it. And you have mm -hmm. to understand it as early as possible. So you have to test it. I think also as early as possible. And about this special offer that you just showed, yes, about the uh, the offer with summaries, that is another thing, another learning that we have about discounts. It works really well when you show a discount at a high excitement moment for the user. So for example, here, the only thing that separates me as a user from reaching my goal, from doing something that I'm excited for, from reading the summary is the offer. So this is the moment when I'm, super ready, super eager to, to buy it, to start the discount, to start the subscription. And uh, when you just show a discount without any connection to, to your product, to your main value proposition, it may not work as well as here. Yeah, I like it. How do you, here, one thing I wanna highlight too and show off a, a, somebody I talked to, and I'm hoping that to have them on in a, previous, in a future live stream is, Rockwell, shout out to you, my friend, we just met. But here, he sent me this slide. He's like, show this to anybody who doesn't want to add the paywall to the onboarding. And he, I really love this. It's going to be hard to, let me try to zoom in. Whoops. Yeah. So you can see that what he says is, in his, this mm -hmm. is a presentation he does, but gam he's talking about like how gambling addicts, ah, how do I show this properly? <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying. So it's like gambling <laughs> addicts have a dopamine spike right before they place a bet, not after they win. Right. And it's kind of mm -hmm. like what you said, the dopamine hit is coming from like the potential to read that book and be like, Oh, I want to consume it. Right. Not usually after it. So we really feel excited right before. And he even says cocaine addicts get a surge of dopamine when they see the powder, not after they do it. Right. Uh -huh. And, so whenever you predict that an opportunity will be rewarding, your levels of dopamine spike in the anticipation, not actually in the completion of the, the act. So Yeah, and you can even imagine a real-life situation when you're like, uh, you want to pay for an experience, and uh, after you've done it, maybe you won't have as much excitement and as much dopamine to actually pay for it. So I think that this is what works on most onboardings as well. What you said was really true that most subscriptions are taken on the onboarding, like 80% plus 
uh, of your revenue will come from your onboarding. And this is something that happens before seeing the product. This might sound counterintuitive, but it works. Yeah. I want to talk about this too, if you're open to sharing, because I feel yeah. like from what I can see from a, you know the free sources that I have, that it still seems like the non-discounted price, the full price that you normally get with this trial of $89, $90 a year, it's still the most popular one for you guys. People tend to just buy this. So as much discounting as you might see, it's like it's for those because, you know, even the highest percentage of apps that I've seen have a trial activation rate of 25%. Does so that mean 75%? Mm -hmm. So it's all the discounting is all to capture a bigger pool of people that said no to you from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So uh, you're right about the fact that most people take this main plan, this free trial, seven day, and then uh, $90 per year plan. Um, I see that someone asked in the comments about whether we have different annual plans in different countries. Yes, we do. Uh, yeah, so it might not be $90 in your country. Um, yeah, but there are always users for whom this is not the optimal model. Maybe there are people who are ready to pay, you know, the higher price when you recalculate it by weeks or months, for example, a monthly price for like $20, but they want to try it. And if they want to stick with your product, they will rather pay this price and revise their decision to stick with your product each month. So there are different types of people in different audiences, and we try to capture as much as we as many of them as we can buy these different plans and discounts are another way to do it so discounts work for people for whom the main concern is the price so for them the discounts will work really well and usually what we do is we don't offer free trial for a discount i actually heard that you said that too yeah and it is in our experience i can confirm that non-trial discounts work better um, there are a lot of hypotheses on why so one is that, you know, you have to balance LTV. And uh, of course, when you have this drop off between the trial and the paid subscription and, you know, the users who buy at discounts there, they are less ready to pay. Well, they didn't buy the main subscription. So maybe their conversion rate from trial to paid subscription will be even lower than the one that you have on your main payroll. So when it's a non-trial plan, you kind of make your LTV a bit higher with the fact that it is not a trial plan. Mm, I love that. I love that what you said. No, I thought it was obvious, Yeva. <laughs> I was like, no, if you do discount, don't obviously do, don't, don't, don't have a trial because that trial, the sub rate is never going to be 100%. And I saw one of our clients was like doing, you know, the best practices discounting after the initial paywall, but having the trial. And I was like, bro, what are you doing? Why is there a trial here? Don't do that. Yeah. And you know, the trial didn't work for those users before. So if yeah. it would work, they would buy it at the first uh, payroll. Good so, point. Yeah. I'll... Good point on that. <laughs> you get one point. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I want to say hi to Blake. Blake's got a great app called Pickle Play. It's, if you're into pickleball like I am, go check it out. Who is it? Slo oh, Slovenia. My bad, Yuri. I thought it was Poland. Mm -hmm. Yep, Mary here. We got a few more people. Pedro from Brazil. Hola, my friend. And then Miguel, Proth. Oh, Proth is here. David, good to see you from Nigeria. We got Saifar who said, how many team members does Yeva have? How long did it take to achieve all these massive downloads? <laughs> well, it makes it sound like that was uh, me <laughs> and only my team who did that. It is not true, of course. So in total, we have more than 180 people in Headway right now. So really a lot of great team members. And I would say that, of course, the team is the main reason for this success. Uh, there are multiple product teams on Headway, and we try to stick to small product teams, which focus on, you know, some main goals uh, like growth areas or engagement areas, something like that. And also, we have a huge content team who who create these great summaries, and not only summaries, also content for our R and D product. So yeah, we have quite a lot of people. Congratulations! Uh, right, Kevin is here. Sammy from Pakistan. All right, Cypher, and I'll try to... Nico, excited to get my app analyzed. Hopefully, he sees the dopamine hit. He might not be excited anymore before after I do it. Yeah, we hope. Ayeva, is it possible... If it's possible, I'd like to know how Headway keeps their CPI or CPA in check on Facebook ads. Are you already advertising at scale? How do you maintain the CPA goal, cost per acquisition goal? Mm-hmm. 
that is a very complex topic. You know, this might be a topic for multiple other podcasts and episodes. Um, in short, we're really trying to optimize well on Facebook. We focus on creative targeting and optimization a lot. So that is something that we work on on a daily basis, on an hourly basis. So we focus so much on that. And, um, you know, I'm probably not the best person to kind of elaborate on the on the deeper side of things. I just know that our marketing team are just geniuses who do that every day and they employ all their t- tips and, you know, tactics to, to ensure that we, that we attract users at a normal CPA. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Are you guys using like event-based op- optimization? Is there anything like that yeah. that you guys can share? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We try to optimize on payment events on like the deepest, the the best events that will attract the most relevant audience for us from Facebook. So we try to to help it learn on the most um, relevant audience for us. And also we try to mix our marketing channels. So we don't only have Facebook, we also have, you know, uh, Facebook plus the web, we have other channels. Yeah, and we're constantly trying to test something else. Well, Irina says, I'm so proud of such a powerful and outstanding Ukrainian product. There you exactly. go as well. This might mm-hmm. be a great topic to go go into it. This, but like, Marina asks, "Hi, Stephen Yeva. Great episode today. We only touched the surface. We're only sixteen minutes <laughs> in. What's the best channel for headway in regards to ROAS? Return on ad spend, iOS, Android, or web funnel?" Mm-hmm. I would say that the optimal ROAS target really depends on the volumes and on the platform. So I won't say that any of those has like the best one because even the highest ROAS might be on the platform that has the lowest amount of download, for example. Mm-hmm. So we're always trying to balance it out. We have some targets that we're trying to, to keep uh, all the time to reach uh, some number of uh, uh, this uh, ROAS goal. So yeah, I, I can't even say that there is one that is like uh, the best in terms of all the factors that you should count. We are going to talk about your web two app campaign, which I'm really excited about too. The, before I do, I thought this was a great question from Kay ready. I don't know. Arvinda. Okay. Why does headway ask so many questions during the onboarding? That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. (laughs) I love this, you know, topic of long funnels and quizzes and questions. That is something that we came to not initially. That is something that we tested a lot and, you know, we found that Long funnels work quite well, especially for web, but for mobile apps too. And why it works, our main hypothesis is the feeling of personalization that the user gets when they answer all these questions. They feel like every answer will be counted in by the product and it will be super hyper personalized for me, for my exact needs. You may do this personalization, you may not do this personalization, but the sense, the feeling that it will happen it stays with the user. So they, they perceive your product as having more value than it might actually have because they've just inputted so many information, so much information about them. I love that. And you know, one of the things we've seen work well too is that having just a learning, crafting your learning experience. Cause Yeva, I we know that stats wise, if you add ask these questions, get users engaged from the very beginning, it increases your conversions right and before i knew that i felt the same way what you just said i was like oh they're like how you know it's a video editor i was like how is your video editing experience i was like oh i'm kind of intermediate and so right after i answering that question i was like oh are they going to personalize this for me and i felt that too and so yeah you do get that hit and if you say you're crafting your learning experience guess what that's only going to increase your conversions too. having some animation before the paywall is a great way of increasing those conversions. Yes, you're totally right. And you can even notice that here we ask additional questions. So we don't yeah. stop at the quiz and we're like, okay, we'll need this one piece of information to tailor your experience even better. So Which this I works like really well. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I love these two. Does this book make you interested? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. I love this. Too. because in a way like i already told you and i'm sure you're customizing this okay yeah i don't know <laughs> i have no idea but i i think i put like time management you know like business ebooks that's a, 
you, you and I have 80% overlap on Goodreads. So we're both, and I was like, yes, yes. this is, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, yes, yes. So, and I was, the, the, when I was breaking this down, I was like, I was saying yes. So when I came to the paywall, my mind was all yes, 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 yes. You know what I mean? Like everything was yes. Uh -huh. You want to say yes, because I, everything was yes so far. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you know <laughs> what makes it even better? is that this can increase your conversions on the onboarding and it can increase your retention, decrease your cancellation rate after the user purchases because you can actually use this data and you can show the user relevant content. You can add to their library what they chose on the quiz and that is something that we do as well. So they already see the content that they agreed to before and it really helps improve the product metrics as well. So it's a win-win situation. You know? Absolutely. And one last thing I'll add on too, because shout out to Rock, he kind of mentioned this to me. He's like, look, you can start to see, is it male age? I'll be 35, 44. That's my age group who love leadership, blah, 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 who read in the morning that lead to the highest conversions, right? High, highest trial conversions, highest sub conversions. Then how's that mm -hmm. inform? Well, go to meta, right? Hey, give me dudes who are 35, yeah. 44. Here the ads are going to show, and then we have content for them. We know they're going to be the highest converting because we have this data already as well. Exactly. And you can even go further and create your user personas and user segments based on this data. And you can see how different pieces of content perform for different types of users. And you have so many inputs from the users to include here. So it's, it's a great field for you know analytical research, and I love that too that you can get just from your onboarding quizzes. So it's a triple win even. I love it. Okay, let's move on to the web to app campaign. So I gave a, oh. presented all this stuff <laughs> to us. So thank you for putting all this stuff together for us. Really appreciate it. Break it down for us. What is web to app for those who might not be familiar with it? Thank you. Okay, so as the name suggests, web to app is simply a method of acquiring users for your mobile app via the web. So the usual user flow for your product may look like that. The user sees an ad creative somewhere on Facebook, for example, they click on it and go to the app store, and then they download the app and buy a subscription there. But in the web to app flows, another step is added to the funnel. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. It's a web oh. step. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, after clicking on the ad creative, the user is not redirected to the app store. They go to the web page, the website, or maybe even a set of web pages. And only after being there, they go and download your app. So this seems like a redundant step, right? Uh, this contradicts most uh, notions about minimizing the time to value and you know getting the user to try your product as fast as you can. But there are some reasons for using it. So there are two main types of web to app that we distinguish at, on Headway, and it's important to define and align on them because you know I've heard a lot of people use the term web to app referring to either one of those or maybe something else totally. So for us, there are two main types of web to app acquisition. It's the pre-land. It's short for pre-landing. It's a short landing before app store and web onboarding or web subscription funnel. It's a long series, uh, more like, yeah, it's a series of uh, questions, of steps with payment in the end. Something like app onboarding, but on the web. So in the second type of web tab, the user pays on the web. And this is uh, a huge source of growth that we have on Headway. And it is something that we already use even in our R&D products. So there is this thought that web tab can only be utilized on scale, but I'm not sure about that. I think it depends on your product and on your niche. In my experience, health and fitness and educational niches have a great chance of succeeding on web to app. Um, yeah, so that is something that we're using on Headway. I love it. And you're saying, look, if, because sometimes people say web to app, explore it after you've exhausted some other channels, but you're saying, hey, for even a new product in the health and educational space, it could work for a brand new product and you're getting people on the onboarding and then eventually they're paying you on the web through Stripe, PayPal, everything else through credit card. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, you know, I would say that uh, if you are a new product and you're thinking about whether you should explore web right now or not, my piece of advice is to look at your competitors. If your competitors use web to app, you can check it, you can try to find their web funnels, their website, you can try to understand how many users are there, how many people go to these sites. And then you can see whether this is a huge source of revenue, source of users for them. If it is, then there's a high chance that it will be good for you as well. If your competitors don't use the web, then maybe you should really delay this test because maybe they've tried it and it didn't work. So that is maybe the main piece of advice on whether to understand whether you, um, you want to test it or not. But uh, it is definitely a great source of diversification of user acquisition channels, of revenue streams. And of course, if you're big and it's hard for you to scale, then you should definitely try it and maybe you could scale with it. Love it. Okay. Let's talk about the pre land. Is this the first thing that you should start off? If you're thinking about doing a web two app campaign and you don't have the resources to build the onboarding, the web onboarding, is this where you should start off? Eva, what's your suggestion? I would say that it is definitely easier to work with freelance. This is just a simple page uh, that uh, you can create really fast. Um, but it won't diversify your revenue. Users won't pay there. So right. this is mostly a means of attracting a new type of audience to your app, other than from usual app install campaigns, like from SK at network campaigns, this audience will be different. And the reason why it will be different is because of the events tracking that you can set up on this page. So why this page is actually needed uh, in this setup is because Facebook, uh, I'm talking about Facebook here, mm -hmm. they have this technology called Conversions API or CAPI in short. I think it was previously known as server-side events or something like that. So it essentially allows you to treat your server as a cookie storage and you get the information about the user at this page. And then when the user makes the purchase in your app, you send this information to Facebook too. But because they started on the web, Facebook sees this as essentially a web purchase and not an app purchase. So you kind of send this different signal to them. And what it does is it starts attracting a different type of audience than you usually do with your usual campaigns. So this is, in my mind, more of a way to scale than a totally acceptable first approach if you have an app right now. But if you're deciding on whether to start with an app or with the web subscriptions, then you can really consider the web onboarding flow first and the web product. Mm as well. I see. Well, let's break down because you put these beautiful slides together. Anyways, let's break down the the pre-landing pages. Mm -hmm. What are, so you, you have some examples yeah. here. Yeah, I do. Um, okay. So we can see that these are usually very simple pages with like some text, maybe an image and a simple but very bright CTA button that leads the user to the App Store. So here your goal is just to let them go to the next step, to let them do that as fast as you can. Right. Can I ask a question here? Like, so you're doing yeah. some tracking here, right? So you know, and you're signaling to Facebook that, hey, when people tap here, this is the event. I'm looking for people who are tap more people who are going to be tapping this, or how do you set up the, the meta ads? Mm -hmm. uh, so what data you pay attention to here is mostly the information about the user that you get from the browser. So it's like cookies, like this type of data. And uh, in your campaigns, you don't optimize on the click here. You optimize on the purchase in the app. But okay. because you know a lot of information about the user from their browser at this stage, through this small button, you can transfer this information to your app and still access it when the user makes the purchase. Wow, okay. That seems complicated, but <laughs> that sounds like very it, interesting. It sounds like that, but you can research it and it's not as complicated as it sounds uh, okay. to, to set it up. Yeah. <laughs> and then are these like web campaigns? They're not app promotion campaigns, right? They're like web traffic campaigns. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No more to that. Okay. <laughs> <It's going laughs> <more> Just <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe I wanted to say something, but I'm like, uh, I like it. I don't know what. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and I have some tips for yes. the freelance that you can use that to optimize it. The first one is to customize. This is my favorite topic because you have endless opportunities for optimization in customization. So the idea here is to customize what you show here to your ad creative. Here, for example, we have uh, two examples. I will focus on uh, the first one, okay? So on Nibble, we have different topics and uh, we have different freelance for these different topics. And this one is the customization for the art topic that we have in our products. And the users click on the creatives only highlighting the art topic and they see this freelance. So they start feeling like this product uh, focuses more on this exact thing that I'm interested in. And as a result, they will be more eager to go to the next step and to buy there. And the same thing for intelligence type creatives. This is something that we have on Headway 2 or had in the past. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that is also, you know, you don't see anything about the book summaries or about, you know, soft skills here. You see a message that is super, super customized to the ad, to the creative that the user saw before. This works really well. I love it. I love how you still have social proof here too. Hey, you know, yeah. over 60, close to 60,000 reviews. I'm sure it's more now. And then, yeah, definitely more. And then, you know, the five, pretty close to a five-star rating on there. Yeah, uh, it's great that you saw that. Actually, that's something that I wanted to highlight as well. Um, you know, this freelance should be very simple, but one thing that you should definitely add is social proof. This will work in 99% of the cases. Yeah, I love it. I know we we so focused on social proof on the web and we just forget about it. I'm like, I go to my favorite thing to do, Eva, is to go to the developer's website, right? And I go, look at on your website. You got all these featured on logos and all these stuff. When it comes to your paywall, what comes to your screenshot, suddenly you become shy or you forget about <laughs> it. It's like, come on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, you should show that ideally on every step of your funnel. In some way, you should. You should insert this information there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this one. I love this example. <laughs> yes. I love this too. Okay. Go for it. You start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's another way to kind of continue this idea of customization to the creatives. It's utilizing custom product pages on App Store to, you know, really drive the message home. So here there was the creative that, uh, that was very similar to this preland. What's your sexuality type and this wheel and everything? Mm. And the preland was customized utilizing the idea that we've talked about before. And then when the user clicked on the button, they went to the app store and the screens there were customized too. So, you know, the whole flow felt so seamless and so focused on one topic. So we never distracted the user with something else. And it also worked really well. You know, one of the things I've been thinking about, Yeva, as well is, how do you use custom product pages as an attribution platform too? Because now you can do a pre-land, send them to a CPP, and that CPP, let's say it's just for meta, can be your attribution if you don't have an attribution. So yeah, yeah that is that is the great uh, thing that you that you uh, remember it. Yeah, that's something that we do as well. Sometimes we don't really customize these uh, custom product pages to the uh, creatives to the freelance, we just duplicate them. And in this way, we can track the performance of our ads better. Yeah. Cool. Oh, this one is one that I love too. So you can transfer a lot of information via this link to the app store. It can be a deep link and you can insert a lot of things about the user, about the ads. Uh, from there. So here it's an example of uh, the create. There was a creative with this book, Ikigai. The user clicked on it and they saw it on the preland. And then when they clicked and downloaded the app, we saved this data that they are interested in this book and we showed this book for them as the first one to read. This wow. is an amazing example of you know hyper customization and it works well. Too. And they're in the reading flow that we highlighted yeah. earlier which I love yeah. that flow as well. And so it's, it must be a high converting flow because you know exactly what they want. You're asking them to pay. They say no on the first one. You go, oh, hey, give them your 70% discount. It's gonna work beautifully. Yeah. Okay, now web onboarding. Yeah, okay, web onboarding, it's another huge topic. You know, yeah. the payments, it changes everything. It might seem like a very small change. 
now the users pay on the web, what's the difference? But the difference is huge. So here, the main, the main thing is that the payment is processed on the web and not on the app. And the app is just another way for the users to use your product. They may stay on the web when you have a web version as we do, or they may go even to the Android app if they don't have an iOS app. So they have multiple options to choose from, but this thing changes so much about your audience that gets here, that uh, Facebook starts optimizing for. So the flow of making a purchase on the web funnel is very different from what you do on the app. When you buy something on the app, you can just double click your button on your phone and you have your card details already inputted and tied to your Apple ID or whatever. On the web, you have to input your card details from scratch every time if you don't have the card saved. And for the user, this changes a lot. So the user has to input their card details to find their cards, to find everything, to input their you know, security code, which is a very sensitive information. And they start feeling so, so many uncertainties and doubts, and they don't trust your website. Another thing is that um, the App Store and the, for example, Apple environment, they provide a very safe space for the user to buy. So every app's page in the App Store is structured in a familiar way. Users can always find trustworthy reviews on the App Store right. that they can read and kind of understand what the app is about. They know where to cancel. They know that when they go to their settings, no matter what the app does, they can always cancel their subscription. So it is so easy for them to make this decision to buy on the app. And on the web, the situation is different. The website, it is different from everything that they have seen before. Each website is different. Then, you know, you don't have these trust signals like you do on the App Store. The users are not sure whether your reviews are true or not. They don't have the same safety measures around them, and they don't know how to cancel the subscription. They are not aware of, um, of the ways to do it, and a lot of products don't talk about that on their paywalls, like how to cancel our subscription. So, yeah, on the web, it becomes much harder to sell something than on the app. And that is the reason that makes these funnels so long, so sales-oriented, and so persuasive. Yeah, so here is an example of a web onboarding funnel of Headway. So the classic funnel is the landing, then the quiz. The quiz might be very long. Can you guess how many questions we have? Uh, let's see. 15. Mm, try higher. Oh, OK. 25. <laughs> Try higher. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm not going to go that high. 25. Yeah. 30. <laughs> I think around 30. Yeah. But okay. we also have these screens between the questions, which we can yeah. count or not count. And if you count them, it's even more. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, we have a lot of questions here. This is also something that uh, that is a tip for your web panels. It works really well here. And if you have, for example, X questions, like another a different number on your app, then when starting working with the web, you should try at least three X, at least three times more. Oh, and then serious? work from yeah. that. Yeah, wow. yeah. Wow. Of course, wow. there is a, a moment it, on, in which uh, you start getting diminishing returns, right? So the more questions, uh, no difference. Um, I think we found that moment around 30 questions, somewhere there. I love it. Okay, 30 yeah, questions. And, <laughs> oh, sorry, you want, me, you, want me, you want me to stay here? Uh, yeah, uh, I want us to talk about the email step. You need this step here because to process the payment, you need something, at least a phone number or an email. And in our experience, an email works better. So more people just have emails who buy on the web. Um... <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> and then people go to the offer. And, um, uh, you know, compared to the mobile app offers, the mobile app paywalls, the web paywalls are much longer. And I think that this is something that is not utilized enough in mobile apps, something that we started doing recently for our R&D products, testing, playing with long paywalls on the app, and it works well too. So, you know, maybe, maybe in a few years, we'll see more long paywalls on mobile apps uh, than we do now. 
so here the offer it shows the benefits and payment plans and FAQs and user reviews and everything. And then the users can pay, pay with the different ways to do that. And also there is no screenshot here, but we have a discount after closing the checkout. So oh, what no we way. talked about this works one? here too. Oh, that's uh, yeah. awesome. I love it. <laughs> Another point. <laughs> but oh, thank I, you. Yeah, but I've been talking about long paywall since 2019. I was like, look guys, you know, the reason why I started talking about it, I was like, I know it works better on the web. People will read what they want to read. So I don't see why it wouldn't work well on mobile. Now people have tested this and I like this paywall. I think the, if you guys are doing long paywalls and you've been following our channel, the one thing that would eliminate from my best practices is just the features table. Like what do you get with mm -hmm. the free plan versus what you get with play plan? Just lean in kind of like what I love this, by the way, it's just like with it or without it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind yeah. of like you go through this because I've seen these type of screens before the paywall, but I like on the web, you just have it on the paywall. So that's what I love here. You're leading with everything, all the benefits, FAQs, why social proof and then asking for the payment. So mm -hmm. that's sort of, a, I love it. Yeah, uh, you know, me too. And <laughs> I think <laughs> I think that it might work better on the web because of the reason that uh, you have to sell more and users have more fears and doubts here. Yeah. So on the app, it is just easier to, you know, just try to skip the screen, maybe even by taking a trial, you know, as easy as it can get. And here to enter card details, you have to be really persuaded and you have to read about everything and users love that. So yeah. Oh yeah, tips here. Uh, I already talked about the quizzes. I won't talk about them more, but it works really well. The thing that I love to do is to interact with the user. So you have so many touch points with your user during the web funnel, it is so long. And one of my favorite examples is also the second screenshot here. So before this screen, we asked the user, are you a multitasker? And if they answered yes, we say, hello, fellow multitasker. It's so great that we met each other. Uh, so they feel like we heard them and that we responded instantly to what they said to us. And if they answer no, we say, OK, that is totally fine. Our um, our product will engage all your senses and will be focused and it will be easier for you to use it, you know? So we're trying to sell even more at this point, but also we're relating to the user. We're trying to communicate with them and they feel heard and that works well too. I'll write that down. I have an idea for <laughs> one of the clients we're working with. I said, no. Amazing. <laughs> and and I, what I love about this, these type of screens too, it gives a break. It's a long onboarding, right? Like so many questions and it gives a user a break, a mental break to be like, ah, you know, you don't want to make it feel like it's work. So you want to make it fun yeah. at the same time. Definitely. Love it. Okay. Yeah. The next thing is also maybe obvious for someone, but maybe not. So I will mention it. Always use limited time offers. So why this works? This triggers loss aversion, fear of missing out, um, urgency biases. The users tend to overlook their minor concerns that they have at the moment in order to get the best deal, in order to buy right here, right now. Yeah. In our experience, the 10-minute timer works well on the web, but maybe it will be different for you. So you should definitely test it too. I love it. Like we said before, dopamine hit happens right now before instead of after. Yeah. And another thing that is, the, is very useful because one of the challenges that you face when you're having this web subscription flow is that it's hard for the users to log in to the app. They may not understand why they have just inputted their email and they have to do it again and also create a password. And also it all seems so overwhelming and they want to go to your product. So if the user wants to continue using your product, for example, on the iOS app or on the Android app, especially about iOS, you can lock them in via a deep link. So you can kind of um, include their email in the deep link. And this way, when they download the app from the app store, they will be automatically logged in. And this will make this experience for them very seamless and easy and flowing. Hey, I think that's it, right? Nothing else on this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, OK, uh, yep, OK, good. Uh, Thank you for all of that. All right, let's get into some of the questions. I know people have been waiting a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you have experience with this. 
or Kuhn, I think he says, congrats on the huge success. I have a question sometimes for Google play. And I have seen this too. The Google play store cannot get the subscription payment from the customer. So they typically you start a trial and then Google has a really hard time processing. So he had to remove the trial free trial because of this issue happening frequently. Anyway, have you seen that? Ava, on your end, on the Android side of things, are you guys experiencing mm -hmm. the trial to paid, having some issues there? Mm -hmm. Okay, at first, uh, thanks for the congrats. And um, I actually haven't um, got a lot of experience with Google Play, but of course this happens on iOS too, when the user doesn't have enough funds on the, on the card or maybe something else happens, like uh, some 3D secure methods fail. So what Apple has in these cases are these billing retry logics that you can enable in your App Store Connect account. And you should definitely do that to try to gather as much um, money, uh, as uh, many conversions as you can get. But I'm not sure about the Google Play, honestly. I think that they must have a similar logic too. Nesser says, what does a small product team compose look like? How big is your mm -hmm. product team? And then what do you think is the right number of people to have on that team? Of course, it depends. For us, we believe in cross-functional teams. So we have people from different um, fields in our teams. We don't have like functional departments. We're mostly more self-sufficient as product teams. So they have this classic uh, Classic team players like designers, engineers, product manager, analysts, uh, uh, anyone that you might need in your team. And um, the right size, for me, it is up to 10 people. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, there's this um, golden rule that two pizzas should be enough to feed the whole product team. I'm not sure about that because I like to have a lot of pizza. But <laughs> <laughs> so in my case, it would be like two people uh, for two pizzas. But uh, but yeah, it's like eight to ten people is perfect. I like it. All right, and then Teo is here too. All right, same here. Also excited about my app, Crypto Wolf. Okay, cool. And then Saeed says thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, Sammy says, what would be the best strategy to increase in-app purchases for ChatGPT app? As we see ChatGPT app itself launch its own app. You have any thoughts on this? You mean their app, the OpenAI app? Yeah, well, Sammy says he, he probably has his own ChatGPT type of app. Uh, What's the best way to increase in-app purchases for his own ChatGPT app? Oh, I'm not sure about that actually. You know, well, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen the chat GPT app. I'm still, you know, using the web version. <laughs> I like it. Well, what I can say, Sammy is, you know, we, we have a video, check it out. It is ASO for AI. I just call it AI apps now, but it was chat GPT apps. The best way is build for the outcome. Unless you got a huge marketing budget to spend on paid acquisition, you know, chat GPT is great for many things, essay writing, paragraph writing, homework. Build for the outcome, focus your ASO and your keywords off of that. And then, you know, you should see higher conversions because you don't know when people are searching for chat GPT, what they're looking for. But what I do know is if you have an AI essay writer, it's higher conversions. If you rank for that and you're building your features towards that versus just being a blanket chat bot, because you can't compete with the open AI official ask AI genie. You're not going to be able to compete with those guys. So you can. If you got a marketing budget, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, Sounds good. And one thing that I would probably add is if your in-app purchases are one-time purchases, try subscriptions. That's another <laughs> idea from me. That's <laughs> five points. <laughs> <laughs> That's a round of applause. I think I have that somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a Sandy note. <laughs> all right. Adrian says, hey, Ava, was it difficult to create trial notifications and what software do you use firebase and steve would it work to include trial notifications info on our long page instead was it difficult to create trial notifications oh right trial notifications obviously you know we'll inform you on day five all that stuff was that hard to integrate no uh, the short answer is no uh yeah. yeah we use firebase and we also use an outer service for helping us with optimizing our push notifications and then we started with the logic on Firebase and then we moved to this uh, different service to kind of track more things and to be 
uh, to optimize this uh, uh, notification as well. But it's not hard. You set up the logic that on the fifth day or uh, in two days uh, when the subscription will end, you will just send this trial. You can test its copy as well. I was yeah. going to ask that. What have you found to be the best copy in terms of keeping users onto the trial? Surprisingly, the more honest and the more clear copy works well there. So yeah, that is something that I'm not sure about all the tests that we've done, but what we have now is this really clear copy that your trial ends in two days. Just okay. keep using it and that's all. No, no, it's something like come back to the app to try all the features or something like that. Okay, got it. I'll have to ask you for it if you don't mind, Sherry, because I think that's a great sure. way of highlighting. It would be a great LinkedIn post. <laughs> Selfishly, mm -hmm. <laughs> <I'm trying> to... <laughs> all right. How are you on time, Yeva? Because I only, we have eight minutes that I've stolen. Okay, good. Can we go long? Can we go yeah. long with you? Okay. Yeah. The audience <laughs> wants it. We got to give it to them. All right. I see the questions. We're going to try to get to as much as possible, but we got to do the, you know, we got to, we got people are here. We got to help them with their app audit. So let's get into the app audit. And Yeva, we like to start off that? every app audit with some dad jokes. You are the guest. I'm going to say you can go first and then you can decide second round. So you can go first. I will have ready to go. All right. And so you go. What do you got, Yeva? Okay. Okay. So this one might be a little bit too cheeky. So tell me if it is. <laughs> Come on. It'll be good. <laughs> it is not that the guy didn't know how to juggle. He just didn't have the balls to do it. All right. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Starting strong. <laughs> all right, Eva. Well, I tried to find some more educational content. Right? Okay. I was like, okay, library and books. So I was like, all right, come chat GPT, find me some jokes around reading and books and stuff. All right, Eva. So what's a librarian's favorite dance move? What's a librarian's favorite dance move? The shuffle. Ah, okay, okay, that's nice. Okay, all right. So put Y if you thought Yeva's joke was better. Put S if you thought Mike's <laughs> joke was better, and then we're gonna play for dinner. All right, next time we see each other, loser all pays right. for dinner. Okay, deal. Okay, all right. Uh, let's get into the app. We've got this app from Nico. Nico, what's it? Go How's it going, brother? I'm gonna. Nico says, I'm ranking number one for Rubik's Cube Scanner. Nico's got some success. Yeah, he's got 33,000 reviews on the US App Store, easiest Rubik's Cube solver. Yo, my daughter would love this app. Scan your cube, and then you're going to tell step by step how to solve it. That's awesome. It's a really cool idea. I really like it. All right. Uh, I don't, he didn't, Nico, you got any questions? I'm going to, otherwise, I'm just going to go straight into the app. Yeah, but you got anything on the App Store that you want to highlight? I think I noticed something. Can you scroll down to like the detailed information even even lower? I don't know, lower, lower. Even lower. Oh. <laughs> um, I see that the size of your app is like more than 140 megabytes. I'm not sure how it impacts your install rate, but I would probably either research it. And if it does, you know, if you find some research on the fact that, you know, when the app has a size of more than 100 megabytes, you could try to optimize this size because we, we actually try to optimize it for our apps. So that might be something that, that you could improve on okay. right from here. That's a great one. Yeah, I, I like the screenshots. Easiest Rubik Cube solver. You got the social proof here. You got scan. I think it looks really, so really solid cube mm -hmm. solver. I guess he can't use Rubik's Cube. I don't know, Nico, can you use Rubik's Cube? I know you have it in the title, but if you can't, you might try to hide it in the Spanish Mexico. Oh yeah, let's see it. Yeah, you might try to hide it in Spanish Mexico localization. Mm -hmm. I think I it auto, yeah, give me Spanish. Okay, good. You might try to hide it there if you want to. If Spanish is not a big market for you, think about hiding Rubik's Cube in here. And that's how we get away with hiding different brands, Spanish Me Mexico localization. Okay. That's a cool tip. I didn't know that. I will write it down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into Nico's app. Let's see, gotta hide certain things. This is the app Nibble <laughs> from Headway 2. So I got that rocking and rolling as well. We'll try to talk about that. All right, let's get into it. This. 
Yeah, see, I take a look at a lot of apps. All right, 21 moves. Nico says in the comments that no, you can't. I got flagged. Maybe oh, they got, even even try to hide it, huh? Nico, try <laughs> Vietnamese then. <laughs> it helps the US app store. There's nine different localizations that you can try. So try hiding them a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, but you want to start? This is the first screen I see. Yeah. I love that you had one CDA here. So it's obvious what to do. And the animation is very engaging. So here it seems good. What you might add here is maybe some value-based messaging, like what can I reach with your app? Because now you just want me to, to let go, to go yep. further. And um, I might not have enough motivation here to actually go forward. Yeah, completely aligned with that. That's what I was going to say too. I was like, look, you know, maybe lead with like the simplest way to solve your Rubik's Cube, which you already had on your first screenshot might be worth mentioning again, mm -hmm. one more time instead of 21 moves. I know that's probably your brand, but like, you know what? Even Headway has their brand and like, I forget what the, the title is, but the benefit is right underneath on that first screen. So mm -hmm. there you go. Okay. Uh, I think it's three by three is the normal one. How do you scan? Oh, it's a video making me watch a video. I guess this is important, right, Eva? What do you think? Mm -hmm. The first thing that I want to say is that you don't have subtitles on your video. If you have sound, then mm -hmm. I'm sure that most people have their sounds muted on their phones. So I've heard that you should definitely use subtitles for all videos that you have. And another thing that, have you tested having the onboarding without the video? Maybe it will be easy enough to understand for people what to do. If you have this like image of the cube, turning, maybe Great. they don't need a video. Oh, you're going to see my crazy screen. Here's my board. Oh, it's a little dusty. Wow. Oh, close. Yeah. And this is us. Okay. Well, I don't have, what if I don't have a cube? Where is the, what I want to know is where is the, the paywall? Where's the paywall? Maybe I have to scan it before I see the paywall. I don't know what you have, what do you think? All right, I'm gonna close this out because I don't need you guys see my desk. <laughs> but like, what do you think about not having the paywall? And I'm assuming Nico, you let us know, but like, what is not having the paywall before I even scan? Yeah, that's definitely something that you should try, have a paywall, maybe have at least more benefits on your onboarding so that you get mm -hmm. the user hyped up to try it. And right before the scanning and the actual using of your product, try to show them the paywall. It can be skippable, but I'm sure that some people will definitely buy at this point because they likely have the need right at the moment to solve the Rubik's Cube. So they don't, like, they are ready to probably um, even pay a little bit. He's saying I can manually input it so, like, I can... But yeah, you know, if you if you input it, it may be a bad cube, like it, it doesn't exist. So right, yeah, he's saying it doesn't. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to see the paywall, but Nico, bro, if you do nothing else after this call, please just add the paywall to before you make me do any uh, all this work. Because look at the data, right, Yeva? I like to be data driven. If you look at the data and like how many people scan, how many people input manually. Mm -hmm. That number, if that's not a hundred percent, bro, you're missing out on, you know, all the screen, all the paywalls that can be leveraging. So not this paywall, bro. Okay. Yeah. Um, it would be nice to, uh, to know which keyword. Oh, sorry. One more thing. It'd be nice to know what colors I ran out of. I'm sure people aren't just randomly putting crap like I am, but I don't know. Okay, I guess, I guess this is it. <laughs> input a solved cube what are you talking about oh uh, yeah go on stuck okay blue I got blue left one blue i see that nico says that we let users scan it once free and then ask for a rating that really propel us up the keyword range. uh -huh, okay okay but when do you Good. show your paywall before the second scan or or when Oh my gosh. You know, this is really hard maybe for people who who want to have this app, but they don't have 
right here, right now with them a Rubik's Cube, you may add like a prompt, a, something to show how it works. For example, the button to randomize, you know, the tiles on the on the Rubik's Cube, and maybe just for them to see what it will work like. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Sorry, Nico. Can't help, unless you can tell me how to get to the paywall, show the paywall during the onboarding, man. It's going to make a huge difference. I'm glad that you let users scan it once for free and then ask for a rating. Help, ratings do help, but you know what also helps? Revenue. You know, having more revenue, Apple's going to propel you to even higher, you know, keyword rankings, in my opinion. Ratings and revenue and downloads beyond keyword optimization. Those are the three factors I feel are the most important when it comes to ASO. Anything else on this before we move on? I would just double down on adding the paywall on the onboarding and just adding subscriptions and trying to, to monetize it as fast as you can. Because now, you know, I, I don't know what your conversion is to the paywall, but it seems that it is very low. Probably low. Yeah, probably low. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay. Yeva, I might owe you dinner, but you was a clean sweep, <laughs> George. Why, 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 why? Okay, fine. I hate you all. I hate you all, but thank you for joining. <laughs> Appreciate it. Okay, Eva. All right. Let's go to round two. I okay, shall start. You start. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Full disclosure, I didn't like any of these either. Okay. All right. I'll, <laughs> I'll go with the old one. I know I've said it before, but Yeva, Yeva why did the tissue? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> How do you make a tissue <laughs> dance? Like a napkin. How do you make a tissue dance? I don't know. You put a little boogie in it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I like that. <laughs> okay. What you got? Okay. Um, let me see. Did you hear? There was a fire at the shoe factory. Really? Many souls were lost. I like it. All right. <laughs> Let's get into Joshua's app. Joshua's got a pregnancy tracker app. I'm going to pull his app up. Let me zoom out right here. Boom. He's got his pregnancy tracker. He's like paywall paid features onboarding. So that's what he wants us to focus on. But anything quickly mm -hmm. off the, the app store screen that you want to focus on? I love the screenshot. Uh, it seems nice. You can add the tip from the previous app, like add more social proof on your screenshot, maybe in the first one, on the second one, this might help you. You have a lot of reviews and they are great. So ratings, I mean. Yeah. I mean, I think what I would do too on these screenshots, test video versus no video. I don't know if you have any insights on that. What I've heard is sometimes video actually hurts conversions rather yeah. than increase it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For us on Headway, we now don't have a video. We had it before, but then we tested and removed it. Yeah. So test without video and see if it performs better. I, I like these helpful tools, but what are they? Like, you know, you know, your audience. So like it could be pregnancy tracker, social proof. What are the mm -hmm. most helpful tools that, you know, your audience or your users love help them instead of just saying pregnancy tools, like what are they fertility tracker, whatever, right? Whatever the main thing that people are looking for and everything else I really like too, but yeah, I would leave. There's Oh, I'm sorry. No, please <laughs> interrupt anytime. There's you're the guest. There's something I wanted to add here. So it seems that the benefits that you're listing are more like features of your product, productivity tools, tracking, and something. I would think about what deeper value does your product bring to the users. And here, it might be very easy. Like people are, they fear not being prepared for everything. They fear forgetting mm -hmm. something about their pregnancy. So maybe mm -hmm. you could try some value-based messaging like keep yep. uh, uh, you know keep track of your pregnancy or don't miss anything important for your baby so something like more something deeper than just features i think yeah. it would convert better there you go here we go track your baby's development receive support from our community track your pregnancy milestones and symptoms snap pictures of your baby bump yeah i like this mm -hmm. If I were comparing between his competitor and you, Joshua, I, would, I like the screenshots of some of your competitors. I like the visuals. They're really good. I like the pink and all that mm -hmm. stuff, but the messaging might need some work. And then Nico says he's getting about 1.5 versions. 
And then he said, That's if possible cool. to clarify, should I add a paywall that still offers a free solve or completely block users from scanning and solve once? What I would do is I would add a paywall with subscription plans without the free solve, without anything, just buy a subscription. But I would make it skippable and allow the users to start solving, but maybe in the middle of solving, I would add another paywall with a discount, like mm -hmm. a non-trial discounted paywall and try to, it, it may be skippable as well. And maybe just for the second time, you can add a non-skippable paywall with the highest discount that you can get. I would just try, try this. I love that. Yeah, I love, I don't mind you <laughs> letting people solve for once, but Eva, I really love that. Cause I thought you were gonna say after the solve is done, but I like it before. I like it before a lot more. Give them, give them more points. Come on. Who's my producer? <laughs> Nobody. It's just me. All right. All right. Let's get into Joshua's app, pregnancy. So he wants help. You got, you know, the onboarding. Gave us the onboarding queen. All right. Here we go. <laughs> well, first thing, read interesting articles. Always change it to a value-based messaging. Like, not read articles, but what will I get from reading these articles? What will be the end goal for me to use your product? What do you think about this little skip thing at the end, at the bottom right here? I don't understand what it does. Actually, I would think that the continue button leads you to the next page. Let's see. What do you want me to do? Swipe or hit continue? I want you to continue. I think users don't yep. swipe. Okay. Helpful. Uh -huh. so, so the continue button swipes this the small snippets of information mm -hmm. okay so i would change that i would uh, make the continue button just lead you to the next step and allow swipes for those who who want to do that you mean like what do you think don't... steve i love it I, I would say the same thing actually whoops let me ah this thing is annoying <laughs> move this remove this right Eva? like remove this and let me do continue or swipe but i don't like i don't like having it the same I like changing it mm -hmm. because visually then we just get banner blindness, right? Like you got to change it up a little bit. If I'm just, all you're doing is changing this text, I'm going to get bi bl banner blindness because it's just this visually, it's the same, right? Mm -hmm. You can go back to headway too, and we can look at the onboarding, but you can see one engage, right? Like engage, but here's social proof, achieve your goals, start with something fun. You got the world's best ideas right here. Let's begin your journey. It's a nice blend of asking questions and also just letting you hit continue, right? It's mm -hmm. like, ask, 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 done. Wait, mm -hmm. you know, wait again, ask, ask, mm -hmm. ask again, and then wait. So the, you can see like it visually changes because everything is changing right here, but right here, your thing is completely just like, blah, blah, blah. And then after a while, I'm going to be like, blah, blah, blah. That's what I so like. First two was like, cool. Then it's blah, blah, blah. Right, let's yeah. Yeah. Oh, five questions. You know what I think about that? You should have more <laughs> questions. <laughs> more questions. I don't know yet. Let's go. Um, birth known. Sure. Well, let's make it Christmas. So that's fun. <laughs> okay. Okay. Continue. I, I went from five to questions. three, Ava. Look at, oh, dang it. Ah, Don't do all that stuff. I lost stuff. the paywall. <laughs> I lost the paywall. And I, uh, you went down to, it went from five questions to three. That's what I wanted to highlight. And then I know they're doing a discount on that. But before I see that, I want to see the normal paywall. But let's see. Oh, sorry. Oh, this is it. Yeah. Okay. Monthly so trimester. Okay. What I wanted to add about the quiz is that the questions you might add could be focused more on what the user wants to achieve in their pregnancy, like what their goals are, what their worries are for now, whether it is their first child or not, get a bit more background information on them. And of course, this data can be very sensitive. So I hope you take care about that, about the privacy, especially with health apps. You should definitely do that. But um, yeah, ask the user more about what they want, what they need, and what they, you know, uh, what what are their pains. Do you have any on this or thoughts on this free trial enable? It doesn't the look it doesn't change price as much. All it does is enable free trial. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let's start with the heading. I would also make it more value based, not like try yes. our app for three days for free. This doesn't give any value to the user actually. So they need to understand why should they try it. 
I love the reviews. This is great. But about the trial, um, I would give a trial only for the most uh, beneficial plan for you, like the longest one. Maybe here it's a trimester. So as far as I can see, when you enable the free trial, it adds to each plan. But I would just add it to one plan. Only let the users buy at the trial for the trimester plan. Can I jump in here real quick too? Sometimes <laughs> what I've seen too is when you hit free trial enabled, the default plan changes. So like it goes from free trial enabled to be on the trimester. And we have, there's some data points that three plans are better than two and two plans are better than one. So my favorite is three plans. I would try to aim for the year because it's probably going to be the highest LTV on mm -hmm. the year. That's what data says and I agree with you but it's like i would put the trial typically when i do stuff i only do trials on our yearly offers and that's what one of our apps does and every most like 99 percent buy the yearly nobody buys our monthly or six month offers and that the trimester is good so you probably want to get the monthly so high that people are either opting in for the trimester or for the yearly Right, like just you're mm -hmm. all in, and plus if you have the due date, you can see, like you can almost flip it, right? Like if the due date's near, then maybe you lead with trimester. If the due date's further around, further out, then maybe you lead with the annual side of things. Mm -hmm. so. That's actually very nice, you know. Maybe if the yearly plan doesn't work for you, you could try also a six months plan. Maybe yep. something that you know the longest period that you can let them have. Now you have. I do. There's one thing I do hate on this page. You want to guess what it is? Yeah, tell me. It's, Maybe the layout of the text on the in the. Uh, I don't like the scrolling. This scrolling. Ah, thing. Okay. You, okay. You know, you know, I'm magicians, and I'll just use an analogy. But on the web, people. This was like 2020 range, or no, no, 2000s, early 2000 range. Everybody on their websites had these scrollers that would automatically scroll, uh -huh. and then eventually we found out on like, especially on pricing pages, it didn't work because it almost becomes distracting, you know, like magicians, you move something right here only because so I can mm -hmm. do something right here, right? Like, like, Hey, pay attention to this. So I can do, that's what I feel like. If you're focusing on this, you want people focusing on the trial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let them read. So I rather have three, I rather lead with benefits and have some beneficial stuff with some social proof. It could be just like your star rating, but let this be the one that moves like, you know, and that does work. Mm -hmm. Small little animations do work, but I'd rather the focus be on the start free trial versus, you know, on this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I agree. And the, um, there was this the layout of the text. There was too little space when you enable free trial between, mm -hmm. oh, wow. <laughs> Second open. That's good that you, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so when you enable free trial, you see that um, there's so much information in mm -hmm. this first uh, trimester period uh, um, uh, place. So maybe you cannot say charge $9.99 for three months. Maybe you can just say charge quarterly. And yeah. um, maybe try to optimize the design so that it doesn't stick together. The trial and the best value uh, yeah. doesn't stick together. Yeah, I agree. And I hate when I see best value or most popular, just say save, right, X amount. Cause then, you know, we're, we yeah. like that as users, we like save and you give me some number versus best value where you don't really highlight anything. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I don't have any data on this, but I hate these. Again, I want data when I hate something, but like, I prefer to see what I'm going to be charged. Cause I'm actually going to be charged about 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. Oh, 10 bucks every three months. That's so cheap. What? 10 bucks for every yeah, month? Yeah, that's oh. too cheap. <laughs> yeah, that's cheap. Try playing around increasing. I thought you were going to actually charge me more, but charge $10. Okay. Well, that's really cheap. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's so much going on on this page. Yeah. Check I don't actually understand what I should do. Like the first action that you want me as a user to do here, maybe you could like highlight something very vividly on this page or make a floating CDA button, like, I don't know, input my symptoms or something like that. So that I understand what you want me to do here. Oh, I like these top names from different countries. Mm -hmm. I love it. Liam, Noah, Turkey, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nice. the reason why I always do the second open because the headway, I love this, right? Like you have 
the free daily read. So <laughs> then a bunch of books too. All that stuff. Yeah. All right. Hey, Yeva, tell me a little bit about Nibble. Like why start when you have such a huge brand and Headway is strong, now I'm the number one app. Like what's the what's the philosophy or strategy behind launching a brand new app called Nibble? Yeah. Uh, so thanks for asking. Uh, I've been working with Nibble for uh, for quite a while now. We've launched, uh, I would say recently, we're a young product, but still. Um, so yeah, I'm always glad to talk about our new product as well. Uh, we perceive Headway as more of a micro learning solutions ecosystem. So we're not only focused on book summaries, only on them. We also, you know, we try to cover other topics and other ways to learn in the educational niche. So Nibble was for us a way to test a different type of learning, a different learning style, which is more visual, more interactive than what we have on Headway. But we noticed that for some users, those learning styles that we present on Headway, like listening or reading, are not the best, not what they want. So we had this idea that if we packed the content in a more visual or interactive style, it would be easier to perceive for a piece of audience. And we could even get a share of the education market with this mm -hmm. learning style. So that was one part of it. And another was that the topics that Headway covers are more oriented towards ideas, book summaries, books uh, and soft skills like communication, maybe business skills, raising children. But uh, there were so many topics like mathematics, science, logic that we never covered and that we wanted to cover it as well because we love education in all its forms. And we just decided to test it as a different product because, you know, it is hard to to have multiple value propositions in only one product. So, you know, uh, users may get uh, confused when you try to present them so many different options on what to do in your product. And, um, and also we wanted to test this hypothesis, you know, to isolate it. So for us, another product was a good decision here. And yeah, you, <laughs> you opened the Nibble app. Uh, yeah, it is rather I young. Call my professional skills, and then it's like, yo, we got you for the professional skills. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> that is something. That is an uh, example of interaction with the user that I mentioned before. And uh, yeah, Nibble is not optimized as well yet, so we're quite young again. But still, mm. uh, uh, we're testing this hypothesis of whether this learning style and these topics might be good for the users, might be interesting, and might. Uh, get high ROI, and um, yeah, now it's uh, it's going well. Okay, I'm gonna go quick because I do have a call in like 20 minutes, and then you gotta go to <laughs> dinner. So let's. We didn't get any votes for round two, so you round round one, and then we'll claim you the winner. So congratulations. <laughs> oh, that, thank you. On the dad joke round, and then I've got some quick questions from people on here. Sure. So, all right. Oh man. Okay, I'll try to get to. What is the main reason for pre-land on the web to app campaigns? User acquisition channel, audience diversification. That's the short answer. Mm, I like it. And then answer this if you want. Miriam asks, how much is your ROAS? If you can answer that. If not, are the ads more profitable? Because Blinkist was example running ads and break even point just to increase revenues. I'm not sure I can disclose this information and uh, yeah. So yeah, how dare uh, you, if man. I'm not sure, let me, let me do that. Yeah. Dude, how dare you ask that? Obviously they're profitable. <laughs> All right. And then in today's competitive app market space, how do you see the future of app marketing evolving? What are trends app developers and marketers should be aware of? Oh, that's interesting. I think that it will get harder and harder to, to target the right audience. And we will have to find new ways to track and to find these audiences. One of the trends that I see right now is that creative targeting gets more and more important. So now your main instrument for finding the right audience is using the right ad, using the right creative. So that is one of the trends that I think will continue. But of course, you know, AI, it's a hot topic right now and it's a hot topic. I think it will be for some time for sure. It might change a lot of ways uh, of ours and uh, it's really hard to predict how, but I think that it will definitely influence. And it's already influencing our app marketing strategies. Yeah, agreed with that on the AI side of things. Kay asks, 
what, how do you stand out among other competitors? Anything, any particular factor about how to try to stand out from the competition? Hmm. I would say that you must understand what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are and double down on your strengths. That is the shortest answer that I can give. For example, um, one of the, the examples that I can give is um, the covers of summaries on Headway. So this was one of our unique uh, value propositions that we had compared to, for example, Blinkist some years ago. So they didn't have these beautiful, like custom-made crafted covers. And we had amazing mm -hmm. illustrators who did that. And that was something that made our product very like eye-catching and seem like an eye candy. So that was something that worked for us for a while. Um, as an example of using your strength. Yeah, those are the beautiful covers that I love. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. That's a great tip. The, the way I would answer this too is I would say, you know, when you're standing out from the competition, like lean into the niche versus like leaning into like, I always pick on meditation because I've worked with so many meditation apps or even chat GPT apps these days, like lean into the niche. What niche are you building for? And then lean into that, especially as a startup, you want to find, that's the easiest way to find product market fit fast and make sure people want your product in terms of revenue and being in the more niche allows you to increase your conversions. The more niche you are, the more, the higher those conversions are as well. All right. This is a great question from Sam. What is the best practice to show paywall to, to users? How often should you show them? And then will it work whenever users launch an app after paywall? Wait, wait, will it work whenever user launch an app paywall? Okay. I don't know. Will it work if you launch a paywall on every app open? I guess he's trying to say that. Um, of course, you should test it, but the rule of thumb is show the paywall as often as and as early as you can. So on the onboarding, then if the user doesn't buy there, show discounts in the second open and uh, target some specific in-app events with your discounts. What you should keep in mind is that the average user life cycle on any app is quite short. So it might be like one week for you and you don't have that much time to try to monetize the user. So you should just try to do it as early as you can. You're like, stop giving me points. It's very distracting. The, <laughs> I agree. The stats no, are out there. People are not going to stay in your app as long as you think they, we all want them to stay in their app, right? They're going to leave soon. So I agree, agree with you. But like, in my opinion, show it on every app open. I don't care because they're going to eventually leave you anyways if they're not going to buy, right? They're going to delete your app because what, that's what we do. We're fickle mm -hmm. when it comes to the app space. All right. Neil says, which web to app are performing better in general, pre-land or web onboarding? And what is the percentage? It's a great question. Those are very different in terms of the, the users. I would say that um, I don't think it's right to compare them, really. You know, those uh, ways to attract the users to your product, they are very different. So I don't think that it is very valuable to compare them. So both work quite well. The freelance attract users to the app and the web onboarding attracts users to all the platforms, to the web, to the apps, iOS, Android. Yeah. Now, if I don't have an onboarding screen, will it hurt if users open the app and see the paywall after the, the loading screen? So what do you think? It will hurt. So yes. you must have an onboarding screen, at least some screens. Yeva, I would like to know your thoughts on utilizing summary pages right after someone completes the quiz. I've seen a lot of brands showing the summary page after the quiz and then the payment page. What's a summary page? Mm -hmm. You know what that is? I think it's about? a summary of your quiz answers. Oh, okay. If I'm, yeah, yeah I, okay. I think that's something like that. We do that on the web and it works quite well on the web, but on the app, it didn't work as well. So that's our learning. I think it's it may be also because of the the faster nature of the apps when you it's easier to buy there. So this extra step might be useful to persuade the user further on the web, but not on the app. But you should test it too. Love it. Leonardo says, "Hey guys, I was number one for a keyword, and suddenly one day I fell out of that position. What could I have done wrong?" I think there's a question more to you, Steve. Revenues. That's my opinion. I had one client making six figures a month, hundred thousand plus, and you know they made some switches to be Stripe. 
versus Apple in-app purchases. We were number one for a keyword that worked so hard to get them into number one position. We lost rankings around the same time that we made that switch. So I believe, in my opinion, if you one, if you haven't updated the app, that could be a problem. Two, revenues. Focus on revenues. All right. All right, Delip says, okay, when we're out of time, we're out of time. Headway seems to also be doing Apple search ads. What percentage is the Apple search ads channel compared to the meta ca campaigns? And how is it working for you guys, Apple search ads? That is also not something that I worked with a lot. So yeah, we're using Apple search ads. It's definitely less than meta ads. And um, yeah, but I can't, um, I don't know more information like on the deeper level of this topic to share with you. I would start with Apple search ads if you got nothing else, because all these other platforms require creatives and beautiful creatives like Headway has. And so if you don't have those resources, start with Apple search ads, but I am starting to find that Apple search ads are starting to be more competitive, more higher price and competitive mm -hmm. and higher price than like Meta, TikTok, all the other platforms. And then we'll end with this because I think this is a great question. What are three things that you would do first to maximize your monetization if you had limited resources? Okay, wow, I love this question. Yes. So you should focus on paywall testing. Add your paywall to your onboarding flow. We mentioned it multiple times today, but it's super important. Just create an onboarding flow that is value-based, that engages the user, that hypes them up, and then show them the paywall. Uh, show at least some options on the paywall. Um, just try it. Maybe like multiple payment plans. Uh, maybe just don't give a trial. Try that too. Uh, I think that one of the most important things you should define early on is whether you need to give a free trial or not for your product, for your monetization model. So this is another thing that is important. And the last thing is just highlight the value of your most valuable plan as much as you can. Like save uh, X percent, best value plan, um, create a decoy to, to highlight the value of the plan that you want them to purchase. Those are the three from me. I would add, add the paywall doing onboarding, have different options like Ava said, and then discounting. Boom, boom, boom. Discounting on yeah. onboarding. That's it. Those are the three things. All right, Yeva. Sorry if you had other questions. For those who are new, if you're just watching this on YouTube, the live, this will live forever on YouTube. It goes to our podcast feed as well on Mondays. So you get the audio version. You can just take us. You can watch us. And then be like, mm -hmm. what did I miss? Just take us on your walk on Mondays or your commute. And the app is called Headway. You can go to makeheadway.com or search for Headway on your favorite app stores and check out their new product that Yeva has been leading the charge on. It is called Nibble. And then Yeva's contact information is in the description as well. Yeva, thank you so much for coming on and do this. Anything I missed to make sure you want to make sure we tell the client, the, the audience. No. No, nothing amazing. Thank you so much for inviting me, for having me here. Thank you to the audience for the questions and for your feedback and for the votes for my dead joke. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Now I owe dinner, but all right, fine. I'll take it. <laughs> Ava, thank you so much. Have a great weekend, everybody. Next week, we're going to have the, I think he's still at Pandora, but anyways, we're going to have Amal Riaz. We're going to talk all about retention. How do we do this? All this stuff on, he's a marketing leader. So I'm going to meet him at AGS San Francisco next Thursday, but he's going to come on Friday tomorrow, next Friday to talk all about messaging personalization and retention strategies that he's worked on. And he used to be at Pandora if he's not still there. I don't know what's happening with him <laughs> career wise, but Anyways, join us every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific. And Yeva, thank you so much once again for coming on and doing this. Thank you. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you next Friday. Bye.